Hello, everyone. This is Latia for you coming today with another scripture from the Lord. We are in Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 10, and Ezekiel chapter 4, verse 12. Let's go ahead and pray and we can get started. Thank you, Father God, for this word. Bless the people who it is intended for, God, and help us to learn, help us to heed your word. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Hebrews chapter 8, verse 6, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old, as the covenant he mediates is better, since it is enacted on better promises. All right, and so Christ is the mediator of this great new covenant, and he has presented it for all to have. He has um, caused us to be blessed who have received it. He has caused us to come under this great righteous covering. But you know what? Some people still won't receive it, right? It says, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry. This means he has already done it. it. It's completed, right? It says he has obtained a ministry. This ministry that they're speaking of is in the heavenly realms. He is a high priest of high priests forever. And so therefore he is the one who um, is over that ministry of the heavenly realm. Remember the ministries that we have here on earth are just um, a type. Uh, they are a, uh, a, 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 they are a shadow of what is going on in the heavenly realm. So we'll build a temple, but the true temple would have been in heaven, right? We'll do something here, but the truth will be in heaven. The The real thing, the manifested thing will be in heaven. The real, this is just a replica on earth. And so um, there um, Christ uh, is, is over the new covenant. This is where he, he mediates the new covenant. He he is the one who makes sure it is intact. It is all the promises are being um, given and poured out and, and the forgiveness is there. Um, there's a great mercy and great grace there. And he's the one who mediates that, right? He makes sure that everything is being distributed properly. It says, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old as the, than the old as the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises. I'm going to read that again. Sorry, it got a little messed up. It says, but as it is, Christ has obtained a ministry that is much more excellent than the old as the covenant he mediates is better since it is enacted on better promises. All right. And so remember, we have better promises than the old covenant. You don't want to go back to the old covenant, right? And so, yeah, there will always be people who who don't want to come under that grace, who don't want to, to come under that blessing, right? And so the second verse that the Lord gave me was 2 Kings chapter 8, verse 10. And Elijah said to him, go Say to him, you shall certainly recover, but the Lord has shown me that he shall certainly die. All right. And so this is speaking of um, Hazel, right? Hazel is coming for his king and I can't remember his king's name, but he comes to um, Elijah and he's asking him about whether his king will live or die. He's sick, right? The king has sent him. And so um, he, he comes to seek Elijah the prophet and Elijah just reads him right there. Right, right then and there. This is one of one of the most um, odd circumstances um, in the Bible. Is 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 this thing where Elisha reveals what's inside this man's heart? Right. Um, he basically tells him that he's evil and that you know he is going to kill a lot of people and destroy a lot of things from the children of Israel Elijah even just burst into tears as he's standing there looking at this man and so um yeah this is this is a very strange circumstance where this man he he doesn't even realize that he's going to do all these things but um Elijah reveals the evil that is in his heart and he goes back and kills the king, right? He goes back and tells the king that he will recover. And then he takes a cloth and 
puts it over his face and kills him, basically, right? Not long after that. And so it's a great evil that is occurring. And uh, it says, but as it is Christ, and I'm sorry. And Elijah said to him, go and say to him, you shall sh certainly recover. But the Lord has shown me that he shall certainly die. All right. And so the thing that the Lord was showing me about this scripture is that um, here, uh, Elisha is is letting the man know that a great, um, terrible thing is going to occur. And so here, um, the 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 man that was sent, Hazel, um, is is representative of the Antichrist and the Antichrist spirit that is in the earth, right? Things that that look like they 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 are going to um present um good things, but instead they present evil things, right? And so God is letting us know that hey, we need to um be cautious. If you live in that time during the tribulation. You need to be cautious because what looks like it's for you may actually not be for you. And then the person, um, the king who is laying there is um, the, the one who is sick represents um, the unwise bride, right? They have unwisely um, um, discerned um, who it is that they're dealing with. And so um, they are laying in wait, right? And so here, if you think about it, they are, it says the prophecy for the the unwise bride from the prophet is that um, you shall certainly recover, but the Lord has shown me that he shall certainly die right and so we know that the unwise bride if she makes herself ready if she cleanses her garments manually it, or and this is not just the unwise bride I'm sorry this is also anyone else that receives Christ during that time they're going to be in that vulnerable state and so yes they will recover but it will be through their death right for most of them they are going to die they're going to actually um be killed by the antichrist um and his in his henchmen his 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 prophet and in that world system right and so that represents hazel the one who is receiving this um prophetic word and so he's going and he's telling the prophetic word to the one who he's actually going to go kill and so um remember hazel um, not hazel the king is is the unwanted wise bride so they are now receiving the word now they are receiving what god it has is telling them to do they are receiving though that that new um that new covenant but it's at a cost they don't have all of those um good things that came with that new covenant right they refused it during that season but now that they are willing to receive the word it's too late right and but it's not too late in the sense that they can't be saved they they can be saved. It says you sure you certainly you shall certainly recover. Right. They are going to they are going to be able to experience heaven. But remember, they are they're going to experience it at a cost of death. Right. And so it says, but the Lord has shown me that he shall certainly die. And so that was what the Holy Spirit was showing me about this scripture. And the third scripture also confirms that same thing. Ezekiel chapter four, verse 12. And you shall eat it as a barley cake, baking it in the sight, in their sight on human dung. And this is the prophet, um, the prophet Ezekiel. And he is acting out this scenario. He is laying down on his side because of the sins of um, the children of God of Israel. And so he is um, acting out these war scenes um, of the besieging of the, the, the city and he is um, having to cook his food as he lays there for these many days. It's hundreds of days. It's like 300 something days plus another set of um, days on the other side. And so I can't remember the exact numbers, but the key that the Holy Spirit was showing me here was that um, this is speaking of defilement. Right. There was a great defilement of the people. They were eating the the filth of the world. 
right? And so remember, there was some mercy on this, right? Remember, it wasn't a lot. Um, remember, he was to cook this on human dung, but the the Lord had mercy on him because he did not want to defile himself with human dung. And so the Lord said, you can use cow dung. Right. So it was a little mercy, but very little mercy in this. And so that is what the people who are left behind in the tribulation will experience this, this great defilement and this great low state of humbling, of, of being pushed down into the dirt, right, of, of being defiled um, and, and a revealing of defilement. Right. And they're going to have to eat of it. They're going to have to live this out. And so. That is um, the thing the Holy Spirit showed me about these scriptures. Um, let's go ahead and pray. Lord God, help us to uh, be a part of this more excellent ministry. God, you are giving us this great free gift. It is for us and we say thank you. We receive it, God. We believe it, God. We trust in it, God. And we say thank you for it, God. Let your hand rest on us. Help us to abide in you. Help us to stay with you, Lord God. We know this great tribulation is about to be poured out on this earth and many people will die. They will recover, but they will die, Lord God. We ask you, Jesus, to help them to eat of it. Help them to, to receive what it is that you are humbling them with and help them to cleanse their garments during that time, Lord God. We know that you are real. You are able to help them and you are mighty to save them even in their death, Lord. We love you and we give you praise and glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you are a person who wants to receive Jesus as your Savior and Lord, you want to come under this covering, you want to come under this this better um, covenant and better ministry, um, just go ahead and pray this prayer with me. But more than anything, believe it with all your heart as you confess it with your mouth. Dear Lord Jesus, I ask you to come into my heart. I make you my Lord and Savior. Jesus, I believe you died on the cross and I believe you rose again on the third day so that I could be saved. Thank you, Father God, for doing this for me. In Jesus name, I pray. Amen. All right, you guys, if you prayed that prayer and you believe that prayer, Holy Spirit has come into you and sealed you until the day of redemption. And no one can break that seal except Christ Jesus when he comes to redeem his church. The Holy Spirit is in you to lead you and guide you into all truth. And he's going to do just that. Amen. One of the things that Christ wanted us to do and not forsake was the fellowshipping of ourselves one to another. Go out, find a church home, find other believers to be around so that you can stay sharp in the word of God, as well as go out and tell other people about Christ and what he's done for you in your life. Amen. All right, you guys, and don't forget to go and be baptized in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. Take care and be blessed.